Example 5.2. In this example, we have air flowing steadily between two sections in a long straight portion of a 4 inch inside diameter pipe. The uniform distributed temperature and pressure at each section is given. The average air velocity at section 2 is equal to 1000 feet per second. The problem aims to calculate the air, the air velocity at section 1. Notice that this is a continuity case in a control volume, it's a steady case, and we have velocities to be constant at both of the control surfaces. We have a incoming control surface and an exit control surface. The control volume for this particular case is given by this boundary. We start the analysis with the Reynolds transfer theorem for mass which evaluates the continuity for a control volume. Since this is an steady case, the first term is going to be equal to zero. We evaluate the second term at the different control surfaces. We have two, and we notice whether we have a constant value of velocity at each one of the surfaces. If that is going to be the case, then this term simply becomes the summation of the mass flow rates at each one of the control surfaces. We are evaluating a constant average velocity at each one of the control surfaces, therefore we assume them to be constant. And we could rewrite for surface one and for surface two. Then we simply said that this is mass flow rate one and mass flow rate two. Since this is an incoming flow, it's going to be negative. Outgoing is going to be positive and it has to be equal to zero. Therefore, mass flow rate at point one is equal to the mass flow rate at point two. If we rewrite this information in terms of density, point one, velocity at point one, and area at point one, this gives us density at point two, velocity at point two, and area at point two. Notice that the cross-sectional area at the two different points it has exactly the same uh, diameter, therefore area point one and area point two are going to be the same and these two terms could cancel. In this particular example we are using air and therefore we cannot cancel densities because it's going to be a compressible case. In order for us to determine the value of the densities at each one of the control surfaces we're going to use the ideal gas law in which density is equal to the pressure divided by the density and the temperature. Please recall that the pressure and the temperature have both to be in absolute values. So then we replace and we write P1, R, T1, and velocity 1 is equal to P2, R, T2, velocity at point 2. Since the value of R is the same, we could cancel it from here. And we know the value of the different uh, points for the pressure. We know that the pressure at point 1 is equal to 100 PSI A. And notice that this is already absolute. Uh, we are looking for the velocity at point 1. And we divide for the temperature at point 1, which is equal to 540 unkinds. Also in absolute value. We substitute the value of pressure at point 2, which is 18 psi a, the velocity at point 2, which is equal to 1000 feet per second, and we divide by the temperature at point 2, which is equal to 453 Rankines. If we are able to evaluate the velocity at point 1, is going to be equal to 219 feet per second. Please note once again that this is the average value at the entrance and we assume it to be constant. That's why it allows us to be able to simplify this integral into the summation of the mass flow rates at each one of the control surfaces. 